Hello everybody, big big happy Christmas and welcome to our Hatbox Christmas Workshop. So some of you have ordered this kit, if you haven't ordered the kit, obviously you can, um, well you can purchase the kit online, but also you can maybe try and source the materials yourself. So when you open your box, you will actually get the hat box. And I normally have these in two colors and I mix them around and both of them will work out. So we have this lovely gray color or we have our neutral cream color. And I'm gonna show you how we can open them and assemble them in a minute. You will get one bag, well you get two bags, but one of the bags will be all like your trickies and your decorations, all your bits and bobs that you will need for making the hat box arrangement. The other bag, you'll know by the feel of it, this is all the foliage. So this is the fresh foliage, the Christmas Noblis or the spruce. And I recommend that you store that outside. You can open the bag, you know, that way and let the air at it. But even if you leave the bag closed, just stick it out in the, out in the garden, out on your windowsill, you know, that way, leave it like in a really cold place. And the other thing that you'll find inside your box is what we call a bulk bowl and also a piece of floral foam. And all you will need yourself is a sharp scissors and you may need a need, need no, sorry, you may need a knife, okay? So here I have my scissors and I have my knife. First thing you have to do is soak the floral foam. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. The slow way is just basically get your floral foam, force it down into the container and very slowly fill up the edge of the bowl. Now don't let the water go on top. Now if a small amount does, it doesn't really matter. But I prefer that you would hold it under the tap and fill up the bowl right up to the top, okay? But just let the water go down into that, either of them little spaces. And if it sinks down, top it up again. And that way then your floral foam will absorb the water. Another option is you can fill up the sink, okay? So put your stopper in, fill up a sink or a large bowl, whatever. And again, just drop the floral foam down into it. Don't push it, let it go down itself, and then you'll have your floral foam soaked. So I have one in the oven already. So this one has already been soaked, and all, it's gonna be quite heavy now. And all you're going to do is press that, and if you need to press it down with the palm of your hand, now don't put your full weight on it, but just make sure that it's nice and secure down inside your container. Your next thing you're going to do is assemble up the box. Now decide, do you want to use your gray box? Or you'll either have one color or the other. So decide, are you using your gray one or your cream one? You're going to open up the box and the directions is on the end. So the directions is on the end of the box where it will say the first or number one and you just press that down, just take your time. Okay, and then these two small little flaps here will say second and third, so you just bend them down. The next two then will say four and five, so you then just press them down. And the very last one, the final one, is number six. And you can see there's a little slit, a little cut. So basically when you bend that one over, you may need to kind of bend it slightly, keep one hand inside the box, and then insert it like a letter into the letter box, and then just press it down securely, and use your two hands pressed together, and there is your hat box assembled. Now there is little ribbons on either side. They have like a little shoelace, um, little tie at the end so just pull them out gently okay just watch they don't come through the hole and then the same on the opposite side so there's your hat box assembled you have your floral foam soaked it's in the bowl bowl and all you're going to do now is sit that down into the center of the hat box now don't worry that it's going to move around slightly it won't when we put all the material in so next thing then is you're going to open up your bag of greenery so out to the garden take it off the windowsill and bring it back in now some of you may have already opened the bag if it's still closed it's absolutely fine okay so open up the bag and you can set empty that all onto your table so it's all like random lengths so this is called knobless or spruce or christmas tree greenery and if say after this class and you'd like to go make another one, it's probably worth going to your local shop that sells Christmas trees and they'll have some branches of this spruce and you can use that. So we're looking to cut up pieces of spruce about 20 centimeters in, in length or even less. So say this piece here, if we cut it, and this is where you need your scissors, cut it to about 20 centimeters approximately. If it's a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, it's absolutely okay. And what you're going to do is, we call these the little needles, the little leaves on either side, is approximately one and a half centimetres at the end of the stem. You're going to pinch these off or pull them off, do you see like, and it is a little bit time consuming that you have a nice clean stem. 
Then you can take up your next branch of foliage and again you're going to do similar. Now sometimes with the branches of foliage you may have to cut some smaller pieces. So with this particular one I'm cutting lots and lots of smaller pieces. Now we'll go back to some of the bigger pieces but just as I'm taking up the foliage. So with these smaller pieces again I'm going to do the same thing. About one, one and a half centimetres at the end I'm going to clean off the needles. I'm going to bring you in close so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now it doesn't matter that some of these pieces are a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. So you're just pulling off the little needles at the end until you have approximately one, one and a half centimetre of a stem. So the same thing with this one here. Now as I said, this is a little bit time consuming. So there's your little stem there at the end. And we'll take up this one. And if you have any smallies at home, little children or whatever, they'd be absolutely delighted to give you a hand. Now even though this piece is a little bit smaller, I'm still doing exactly the same thing. Now you can see I'm making quite a mess here on the table so I don't recommend doing this on carpet okay or if you are doing it in the living room where you have carpet on the floor is keep all the needles on the table and then you can clean them all off together at the same time they're an absolute nuisance to try and hoover up afterwards now so here we have a bigger piece so I'm going to cut that one into 20 centimeters approximately and again I'm going to clean off the ends so I'm looking for a mixture of different lengths I'm looking for about eight to nine pieces you know around 20 centimeters in length and anything that's left over is just going to be random whether they're 10 12 or 15 centimeters so i'm going to leave you now put me on pause while you go and clean down your greenery and cut it up into the length that you require so again just some of the bigger pieces you'd often have pieces like this in the bag you can just trim the end of it that's approximately 20 centimeters and then you're going to peel off them little needles at the end one one and a half centimeters or again we have another one these triangle ones are great because they absolutely fill in real fast for you but the thing is you'll have kind of more what we often call the finger pieces and that will be these single pieces like this and you'll treat them exactly the same so as I'm cutting up all these pieces and getting them trimmed, okay, I'll just give you a little bit of information about the school here. So here at Case Flower School, we actually train florists. We train florists for working in flower shops. And this time of the year, we always have our Christmas workshops and our Christmas programs. And it could be people who are maybe just doing this for pleasure, doing it for fun. Maybe they want to make a nice present for themselves. Maybe they want to make a present for somebody else. Or maybe it's a decoration for decorating their own home for Christmas. So this time of the year, we'd always have the Christmas wreath making classes, obviously the hat box class that you're doing here. And we also have classes on table centers, etc. But throughout the year, we also have courses on flower arranging, funeral floristry, hand tied bouquets, um, wedding floristry, event and hotel decoration. We have lots and lots of different courses. The best thing to do is if you go to our website, flowerschoolireland.com, you will be able to get all the information. There is grants available, so if you're unemployed, you possibly will get a lot of your courses for free. So the best thing to do, visit our website, flowerschoolireland.com, and click on the funding button. For anybody that's maybe self-employed or maybe working or even if you're just working part-time maybe one or two days a week you possibly could be entitled to the skill net funding and this is where they pay 25 percent towards your course so the best thing to do drop me an email info at flareschoolireland.com now i think at this stage i have all the green we cleaned down so i'm going to clean off my table and get ready for the next stage all the greenery that we're using for this workshop is all Irish grown. So some of the greenery is coming from Wicklow and a lot of the greenery is actually coming from Kerry. And the hat boxes themselves, they can be sourced in Ireland as well. There is a company up in RD County Loud called Evergreen Silk Plants. And again, for people who just want to purchase one or two of the hat boxes, you will be able to purchase them direct from him. So now I'm ready to start and I always kind of find organize yourself so maybe kind of put like your medium pieces your smaller pieces and then your slightly larger ones now within my larger ones I have some of them that are in that kind of triangle piece and then I have others that are kind of more the single pieces and if you decide that you want to make your arrangement a little bit smaller you can cut the greenery pieces smaller and again if you'd like to make it a little bit larger you can make cut the greenery a little bit longer and that will make it larger there's lots of decorations that I'm going to send out to you so you will have plenty of material. Now as I said at the beginning sometimes the bulb bowl will move slightly around the end of the hat box. 
So for the moment, if you could try and place it as close to the center as you possibly can. And as I place in the material, you will find that it will actually steady and balance the arrangement up. So I'll just take it out of the box for the moment so that you can see what I'm actually going to be doing. So while it's actually in the box, I'm going to place the foliage in on an angle. I'm going to bring it in close just to let you see this. Now, normally the bulb bowl would be actually in the hat box when we do this, but just so that you can see it, I'm bringing you in close here. So as close to the floral foam as possible, as close to the edge, but have it resting on the plastic container, kind of sticking it in slightly angled, you're going to place in that piece of greenery, okay? And you can see the way it's overlapping the bowl. But the idea is when it's actually in the box, it's filling in that area, the, spirit, the space and the area between the bulb bowl and the actual hat box. And then when you take up the next piece, which could be a skinny one like this, like don't leave a space in between it, like bring it in kind of close enough to it, and again you're going to do the same thing. Now it's really important that they're resting on the edge of the bowl. If you place the greenery in on that angle there, I'm just going to stick it in like that would be wrong. Do you see that it's not covering the edge? So again, keep all the pieces slightly tipping each other. They can slightly overlap each other if you want to. And so far I have three pieces. I've used two of the kind of the triangular ones and I've used one of the skinny piece. But now I'm going to place it back down into the actual hat box. And you can see the way now them pieces are resting out over the edge of the box. So the idea is now you keep working your way around. So again, we'll take up the next piece, which happens to be kind of a nice full piece. These full pieces are great because they fill in real fast. But the thing is you're going to have skinny ones as well. So you have to try and use up all of them. If you're not too sure like how close to place them together, remember you can always go back and you know add in extra ones in between it. So again, I'm just going to add in another skinnier one here. And again, I'm just going to turn it around and just looking for another triangular one. And we'll add in this one. Now it's very hard for me to tell you exactly how many pieces it's going to take. Because if you're using a lot of these skinny ones, you'll possibly use 10 or 11. And if you're using a lot of the kind of triangular ones, you possibly will get away with maybe seven or eight. So the best thing to do is cut lots of them, okay? And the thing is, any of the spare ones, you can use them in another flare arrangement if you want. Or again, you can always cut them down smaller and make smaller pieces of it if you actually need them. But I have tried and worked it out that you have sufficient foliage sent out. Now, I'm gonna hold this up slightly on an angle that you can see like the shape that I've made. So you can see the way I've worked around the edge of the bulb bowl, the floral foam, do you know that way? All the green is in on a slant, but you can see the way it looks like it's nestling inside our hat box. And that's the hardest part of the arrangement done. The next part is when you're moving on to all the little smaller ones. So if you have any large ones left, and if you need them, you mightn't need them, but if you do need them, you can always cut them down smaller afterwards. So with the smaller pieces, now again, sometimes they might be triangular like that, and most times they're probably going to be little skinny ones, okay? So I would normally say start in the centre of the arrangement, and I'm going to bring you in close again. So you have your smaller piece, and you're going to stand that in the centre. Now there is a back and a front of the foliage, but because this hat box is going to be all round, it really doesn't matter what way it faces. Now if you haven't got a triangular piece, you can put in one of the skinny ones, that will do as well. So stand that in the centre, and sometimes we call that number one. And you can see it's gone a little bit crooked there, but it's absolutely fine, okay? All the rest of the pieces are going in angles, so that's why it doesn't matter which shape or which piece that you use. So keeping close to the number one, I'm placing that one in on a slant. And then I'm working around it, and I'm placing another one in on a slant. And then I'm working around it, and I'm placing another one in on a slant. And you can see I have a mixture of lengths here. And even with the couple of pieces I have placed in, you already can see it's filling in quite fast. And at this stage, I would say, maybe look down into it. So bring your body over the arrangement, look down into it. And if you can still see foam, maybe add in another little piece in there. And if you can still see another bit, you can add another one in there. And as you can see, I have plenty of foliage. So you absolutely have tons of foliage. And if somebody wanted to maybe add a little bit of holly, I didn't add holly because it doesn't travel so well. But again, if you had holly at a later stage, you can always add in a little bit of holly. Or maybe out in your garden, you have any ivy. You know, like ivy is brilliant for Christmas. And again, to add in a couple of little sprigs of ivy, it would add another texture to your arrangement. So that's our arrangement greened up. That's going to last for ages once you keep that in a cool room. And what you could do to prolong the foliage, the life of the foliage, you know the plastic bowl, and I had the wet foam in it, if you add extra water to that, now be careful when it's in the box because it's easy 
for the water to spill and the box is only cardboard and it could get damaged but you could lift the arrangement out you could fill it with more water and then very gently and carefully you could place it back down into the half box so now we're ready for the fun part which is actually decorating the arrangement so I sent everybody out a bag of tricks and when you open it up there'll be a little bunch of wires. Good idea for this is if you have an empty pint glass, okay, a cup or a mug will do the same job. First of all, just undo the sellotape on it and then you can stand the wires in like your pint glass and it'll just make it easier to access them. You'll only need a couple of these wires, like you won't need all that I've sent out to you. But also when you open out the bag, there'll be a couple of pine cones, okay? But what you're looking for are these poncettias, which is obviously a traditional Christmas flower. And these are kind of like flocked and they're going to work really well if you have the cream ivory box or again, if you have this neutral gray box. So there's six of these um, red poncettis in your kit. And then also I've sent out five of these picks. Now these may vary from box to box, okay? So some people I would have sent out this traditional red one. Other people I included gold, give them a little bit of bling. And other bags I included silver. So you have five picks as we call them. And again, that's what they look like. And again, you have a selection of cones. Now with the poncettis, normally when you get them, there's a little bit of a bend on the heads. So I just kind of normally go along and I just kind of like straighten the top of them just to make the top of the head. It's like a wire, you see that's there. So I just basically straighten the top of them just to make them a little bit straighter. Now again, if you don't do that, it's not a big deal. Now this is where you're going to need the scissors for cutting the stems. Now I know there's always somebody who won't have a scissors. So again, I'll show you another way around it. But we'll start off and we're going to place one poncetti in the centre of the arrangement just above the greenery. Now again you're trying to visualise that we have all this space underneath here. But you can see the way it's going to be much much taller. Do you know that way? So I need to take a little bit off the end of it. Okay. I'm possibly going to take nearly 8 centimetres off the end. And then I can place that down as the centre just resting on top of your foliage. Now when you've got that measurement right, you could actually cheat and cut the other ones. If somebody hasn't got a scissors, I will show you a little trick, okay? So for the moment, I just cut four of mine, okay? So get the four of them there. I'm going to cheat, get four of them the same height. And again, I'm going to cut the eight centimeters off the end of them. This is a flower scissor, so I'm able to open it real wide and I can gnaw through it. But I do understand some of you might have a strong scissors, so I'm just going to leave one aside to show you another way. Now the box is hexagon and there's five sides to it, so you have five poncettis left. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick each flat side, okay, so there's one of your flat sides, and you're going to place this poncetti on an angle looking outwards towards the green wing. And then you're going to turn it around. Now for the video, I always work over myself so you can see what I'm doing. So again, on this flat side of the box, okay, kind of in the center of it, again, we're going to place in this poncetti slightly on an angle looking out towards the foliage. I'll turn the box around and again on that flat side of the box we'll stick in our third one and we'll turn the box around and on that flat side we'll stick in our fourth one. Do you see how easy this is? And again if you want to you can always substitute the flare with another one. And then we're working around here and this is the one I haven't cut okay. So what I'm going to show you is I can bend it up okay so you can see the way I'm going to bend that up okay and I'm going to place that one in on a slant and I've just realized I've counted wrong I need one more poncetti because obviously there's six sides to this box not five sides to the box so I'm just going to get Deirdre to just grab one from behind her there okay just to the right hand side and you can be sure that there will be seven poncettis in your kit and we have the one last poncetti. And again, if you haven't got a scissors, all you have to do at the end is just bend them up, okay? Just hold my hand there in front of it, like bend it up like nice and small, and then you can just insert the bended part of the stem down into the floral foam and it'll secure it. So there we have our one poncetti in the center, and we have our six, not five, because obviously a hexagon box has six sides, not five sides, Jeanette. And there is our poncetti is divided up. And as I said, you can change the flowers around. So then we have our picks. Now we've sent out some fabulous gold picks and silver picks and golden green and lots of different ones, okay? And again, you can use as many or as little of these as you want. So if you find that you want to go into the space in between the poncetti ahead, 
or some people might even go into every second space. I'm going to send out plenty so you have lots of them to do it, right? So again, you can either cut a little bit off the end of it or again, you can bend it up with your fingers. Do you see like what I've done there? And again, just in between the pancetti head where you kind of find a space, you can just press that down into it. And again, it gives a nice little texture. That particular one has a red berry on it. Now for the moment, I'm just going to put three of them in. I am going to put extras into your bag just to let you see what it looks like. So there's our second one. And then I'm going to put a third one in, right? So I just kind of think maybe three might be enough. You know what I mean? That's what it looks like with the three in it. But then for anybody that would like, obviously when I turn my box sideways for you to view it, it moves around slightly. But then for anybody that maybe would like to use the six of them, again, there's nothing to stop you. Bring them towards the outside, leaving the stem a little bit longer and bring it towards the outside, just see like that. And again, we can just divide it up and we can bring three little bits of texture to see around the outside and that really makes it Christmassy looking. So that's with all the Christmas picks in it. The next thing then we have is the pine cones. And we have our natural pine cones, but also I sent out some of the white. It's where, it, I didn't tip them with paint now, but where we purchased them in and they're tipped with paint already. So this is where you'll need the wires and depending on the number of cones you're going to use, that will be the number of wires that you're going to use. Now to wire the pine cone, the pine cone has all these little petals on it. So you go down as low as possible on the pine cone and you insert the wire in between the petals, okay? And you leave a little bit of the wire sticking out, possibly two, three centimetres. The longer piece of wire that's left over, you twist it or you insert it in between the petals all the way around until it nearly crisscrosses over the small bit of wire that you left sticking out. And then what you're going to do is just crisscross the two of them and with the tips of your fingers, give it one, two twists and stop, okay? Some people will keep twisting till that small piece of wire is cut in. Don't, you'll only hurt your fingers. Now again, there'll be a selection of sizes with the pine cones and it's up to you. Do you want to use the smaller ones or would you prefer to use the larger one? So again, with the pine cone, we're going to rest the wire in between the petals as close down as we can. Sometimes you can't get right to the very bottom. So as close as you can. Leave about two, two and a half, three centimeters of the wire sticking out. The long piece of wire, you're going to squeeze it or rest it in between the petals all the way around until it literally crisscrosses over the piece you originally left sticking out. And with the tops of your fingers, you give them two twists of your fingers and that's the pine cone wire. So for the moment, we'll just wire up three of the pine cones and let you see what it looks like, okay? Well, by adding three pine cones in and then what I'll do is I'll add three more. Now again, if you have a scissors, you can actually cut these wires. But if you haven't got a scissors, just do what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to bend up the end of the wire, okay, close to the pancetti head. Look for a little space. I'm going to press in the wire down into the floral foam. But watch, I'm going to maneuver and bend the pine cone that it looks like it's nestling in among the material there. Do you see in the arrangement? So don't leave it sticking up over the arrangement like that, like a flag. Like, set it down into it. So again, bend up the end of the wire that you're making that little U-bend. Place the wire down into the floral foam, but then get the pine cone and maneuver it and bend it that it looks like it's nestling in between your poncetti heads. And then our third one, again, I'm going to bend up the wire. I'm going to place it here into the floral foam and again, a little bit of maneuvering. And again, you can see how full the arrangement looks in the center. Now, if you want it, because I've sent out the material, you can wire up the other cones, okay? And maybe to add three around the outside. You know the way I added in the three extra picks around the outside? Now, I do understand there'd be people watching and they would say, I prefer less or I prefer more space. So that's completely up to you. I'm giving you that choice and that's why I'm doing it in stages and you can choose how much or how little of the decorations you want to put in. But I do like to include lots in the kits so that nobody is actually stuck. So again, the end of the wire, just have a piece of cell tape on my finger there. So the end of the wire will do a small little bend just at the end, I suppose about two centimeters. And I'm going to place that in into the floral foam there we go, into the flower foam, and again, maneuver the pine cone and make it sit down into the greenery. And then turn your arrangement around, and can you see that space there? Again, we'll maneuver up the wire at the bottom, stick it into the floral foam, and maneuver and angle the cone that's looking out. And I feel our last cone could, do, could go in there. Now, 
when you're in the walk around shops, you'll often see like little robins or little santies, you know that way. So if you happen to have any of the little robins, you could add a little robin into this arrangement. I'm just going to see, can I put my hand on one here now, just to show you as a little extra. Oh, he once just flew into the room he has. So these are the little robins you often see in the likes of Deals or Mr. Price. And this one has little wires coming out of it, which you could just catch onto one of the materials in the arrangement. Or another thing you could do is using one of the extra wires that I sent out to you, is just kind of like twist a wire around the end of the two wires that are coming out the end of the robin. And again, the same thing, you can either cut the wire or you can bend it up. So just to show you, I'm just going to bend it up a good bit shorter. And then I'm going to place this wire down into the floral foam and put you down shorter and make it look like a little robin landed on it. You know what I mean? It's just an extra, if you want to do that, you can. Some people love them, some people are not so fond of them. And there is your fabulous Christmas gift hat box, which would make a fabulous arrangement for anybody. You'll easily get a full month out of it and longer because obviously the flowers are artificial. So with the foliage, it'll definitely last a full month, four weeks. And what you can do at the end of Christmas is remove all the silks and the artificial material, place it in a bag and put it by until next year if you want to redo up your Christmas hat box. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If anybody has any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. You can always drop me an email, info at flowerschoolireland.com. And again, if anybody is watching this on YouTube and wants to purchase the kit, I'll put the link in the comments above. So, hope you enjoyed it. A very happy Christmas. My name is Jeanette and I'm from Case Flower School.